Welcome to episode four in your ZK app series. This video, we're going to learn how to create a zero knowledge proof and update the state of a deployed ZK app. The way we have it now, we have one key pair, which is a private and public key. This is the private and public key of the ZK app. Now, when people interact with the ZK app, they're gonna have their own public key and private key. So for this setup, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to first generate a key pair, and that's what we're going to use to interact with the deployed ZK app. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do this in a separate file. So we'll just create something like generate.ts, and you'll be able to use this anytime you need to generate some key pair. We'll say import, and we're just going to need private key from snarky.js. So to create a private key, we'll just create a variable and say private key dot random. We can also generate the public key from this. So public key is going to be the private key dot to public key. So we have the private key and public key. So let's go ahead and just output those. So we'll go ahead and create an object in here, which will contain the private key and the public key. Now, I wish we could leave it just like this. We'll need to make one little change and I'll explain that in a second, but let me show you what this will do. We'll say generate dot JS. And executing this code, we get some object. So if you remember from an earlier episode, we took a public key right here and took it from base 58 to a public key object. We now just need to reverse that process. And when you do that, we're going to need to actually use a colon here and say private key dot to base 58. Same thing for the public key. We'll just say public key dot to base 58. Now we should have a key pair and anytime we run this, we'll get a new key pair. So we'll take note of these. What you could do is inside of the keys, you could create a new one and we'll just call it interact.json. So this is the account we're going to use to interact with our smart contract. So let's go ahead and copy that value and paste it here. And similar to how we funded our ZK app address from the faucet, we're going to do that with this new account. So we'll take the public key, head over to the testnet faucet and make a request. And there we go. Here's our transaction and we will wait for this to be confirmed. In the meantime, we can still work on our script. What we will do is import our account key here, specifically the private key. So we'll say const account private key, and we're going to be using the private key because we're going to be sending transactions with this account. When it came to reading data from the deployed ZK app, we didn't need to have the private key. And the public key can be derived from the private key, so we only need to import that. So the account private key, and I'm just going to copy and paste it. So we'll copy this value paste that here. But again, I'm going to say private key dot from base 58. So let's do that real quick. Private key dot from base 58, passing in this value. And now we have a private key object we can work with. We'll also say const account public key. And this is going to come from the account private key dot to public key. And just to make sure we're not crazy, we're going to console log this and make sure it's the same thing as our public key and our key pair. So let's go ahead and say account public key dot to base 58 to the format in our key pair. And then we will run this with the interact.js file. And you can see that value, which does in fact match with this here. So lesson learned, the public key can always be generated from the private key, but not the other way around. So if you're gonna do anything like sending transactions, you're going to need that private key. And let's just go ahead and delete that. We're not gonna need that console log anymore. Now a next step we need to do is say await and then refer to our smart contract and say compile. This is required to create zero knowledge proofs. So what we are going to do is wrap what we wanna do in a transaction. So let's say TX for transaction and this is going to say await mina dot transaction this will take a few arguments. The first one is the fee and the fee payer. So the fee payer is going to be identified by the sender property, and that's where we're going to put our account public key. So that's who is paying the fee. The second thing is the fee property, which we will set to 0.1, which you can do with 0.1e9, as we'll actually be working with small fractions of MENA. This is how we say, Point one Mina. The second argument here is going to be a callback function, which we can define in line here. And this is where we will say what we want to do with that contract, which in our case is invoke the update method. So if we take a look back at our add.ts file, we have this method update, which will update the state and add two to it. So this is how we're going to do that in our interact script. 
you make a transaction, say who's going to pay the transaction fee and the amount, and then say what we actually want to do on that deployed ZK app. However, if you take a look at this update and go to its definition, you can see all this code is local. So it's going to execute this code locally. And this is where we see one of the benefits of zero knowledge proofs. The zero knowledge proof, the validation key that's deployed on the network, will be able to know if we executed this code correctly. If we tried to modify it or do anything funny, it's gonna catch that and the verification is going to fail. Now, if you legitimately want to change your contract code, you're going to need to redeploy to update that verification key. Until then, any changes is just going to cause all of your proofs to be invalid. So to create the proof, we'll say await transaction.proof. And this can take some time. So we'll just give them a hint by saying proving and we'll do something similar for the compiling because that can take some time as well. So we'll paste that up here and change this to compiling. So while it takes some time, we'll at least know what's going on. So how do we now work with this transaction to sign it and send it to the network? We'll say const sent transaction and assign this await tx.sign and then dot send. The signature is going to take an array of any private keys that are required for this transaction. And in our case, it's just going to be our account. So we'll say account private key. And then once that's done, it'll be done, but we can actually console log a URL to see this transaction in Explorer. So I'm actually going to take this URL from above and just modify it a little bit. So let me go ahead and copy this value and I'll paste that here, but we're not going to have proxy. And I think instead of GraphQL, it's going to be transaction. Then what we can do is just add in the sent transaction dot hash, which is a function. I think that should be correct. So what we can do now is execute this. As a reminder, this is gonna take some time. So we'll see these messages pop up. It's currently compiling. And then it said proving. And then afterwards it dropped us the URL to our new transaction. So let's check this out. Opening this in the Explorer, you can see this is pending. So given enough time, this should confirm. All right, our transaction is complete. And if we now take a look back at our deployed contract and we'll need to do a refresh, previously this was value one. Now, when we explore the state, you can see it has the value three. So that state change was a success. In other words, our proof was valid. Taking a look back at our code in the add.ts file, this is what happened. We added two to the current state which is why we ended up with three. Any changes to this code will create invalid proofs. So even though the deployed system is really just a verification key, it's able to know using zero knowledge proofs whether you executed the code correctly. Showing the case where we change this to some other value and then re-executing our interact script, we'll again wait for this process and see that we got an invalid proof. This can all be a slow process, so there is a way to do this faster locally. And that's what we're gonna be talking about in the next video. Hopefully this video was helpful. You should now have a decent understanding on building zero knowledge proofs locally and then sending them to the network for our ZK app to verify. If the proof is valid, meaning you executed the code all correct, then the state updates will happen. If the proof is invalid, then nothing happens. This shows the basics of zero knowledge proofs, but you can do so much more once you start dealing with sensitive data. Stay tuned for the next one where we're gonna talk about improving development speed using local blockchain. This will allow us to simulate the whole process locally so we don't have to spend as much time waiting. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.